What's up, everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar. Here with Zach Blair. Hi. And Rise Against. Again. This is awesome. Again. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here again. Man, the last time we did your rundown, I learned a bunch of cool stuff and yep. heard the best uh, Marshall amp I've ever heard in my life. Thank, uh, I appreciate that. It is a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's back in the rig. It's back in the rig. It's awesome. So you guys might get a chance to hear it today. Yeah, yeah. There's such a cool mod do done to that amp, and I think you're like one of the only guys I have known with that mod. Well, it's really odd. It's a guy named Johnny Mayer. Uh, Johnny works for Brendan Smalls uh, from Metalocalypse. He was working for Day to Remember guys, and we uh, had toured with those bands and uh, met Johnny. And he's like, man, if you have an older model Marshall JMP and 800. Even a Plexi, I hot rod those. And I happen to have a JMP. It had the, like I said the last time, the uh, Eddie Van Halen, like the, the uh, brown sound mod in it. And um, he, it had been malfunctioning. It was like, uh, I wasn't using it. I had, I had played in the band Guar for a long time. <laughs> and I right. used it in Guar. And I think some of the fake blood had gotten sprayed into it. So anyway, I sent him uh, and he modded it and has this resonance knob and it's just amazing. So. I know we should probably start with guitars, but I loved that amp so much it really it's stuck right with here. me last time. Ah, it's so good. So basically, does it cascade the the, the gain stage? Is that it what it's does. doing? It does, and there's five gain stages, Jeez. which is crazy. So you you hear it go, you know, it's just in. It's not like a click knob or anything. You right. just go through the gain stages. Uh, more is more. Yeah, because more <laughs> is more. And the the fifth gain stage, it almost sounds like like Jay Mascus with a like a, a like a. Big muff on or yeah, something. Too much. Yeah, too much. Yeah. So I'm at like well, I don't know about maybe the third gain stage. So it's more than a regular say plexi or an 800, yeah. but it's you know it's not quite too much. You know? Well, yeah. Some other changes. Yeah. The rig's changed a little bit since the last time we talked. Yeah, it has. So uh, let's start with this number one. This is what you're on most all night. So, huh? so yeah, this um, our new album's called the Nowhere Generation. It's like this black and white and gray motif. So I, we had this idea like let's do this. Uh, color scheme with our instruments. And so I immediately was like, I'm gonna rip off Michael Shanker because I think he's the greatest lead guitar player of all time. Uh, or at least one of them. I don't wanna get the comment section going, but, uh, <laughs> cause it will. Uh, and so I did this. And so now Michael Shanker can come at me. At least it's not a flying V. Right. I did it with a Les Paul Custom. And it was one I already had. So it already has the, the, you know, the belt rash and everything, the buckle rash. I used to call it Ace Freely because I used to rip off Ace Freely aesthetically with it. It had white <laughs> pickup rings, it had the white uh, poker chip, uh, gold speed knobs, and so it looked like, it had the, the stark white Les Paul Custom pickguard, so it looked like, you know, Ace Freely's Custom right. that had the the three, you know, and his had three DiMarzio Super Distortions, I believe, so I never had, I never quite got that far with it. But then I, I pulled it out of retirement and I'm doing this with it now. Looks good, looks good. Yeah, so I'm kind of using it for, Kind of everything. I had the neck shaved recently by a guy named Peter Scametta that used to work for Performance Guitars in LA. He's in Austin, Texas now. It looks and great. I love the stinger look. He <laughs> yeah. did the stinger. Yeah, it's awesome. And he did the stinger. Uh, and he's he's amazing. He, he does stuff for me at home. And uh, yeah, so I've been using this uh, as my main guitar the whole time. It's got a JB in it, which uh, it's funny. All three of my guitars out here have different pickups in them that are all similar. So we'll get to that. Yeah. But yeah, that's the main guitar. Are you ever on the neck pickup? Um, for, usually if I go to clean stuff, like right, if it's right. a clean tone thing, I'll go to the neck pickup. And if I'm gonna go for like, we have a part in the set where we just kind of jam one part and I'll just go for, you know. Fatten it up. Yeah, yeah, I'll just go for that. But for the most part, yeah, I'm yeah. kind of that guy. Man, I've always, always kind of avoided uh, LP style guitars and I have a bunch because of the switch right there. If you're playing fast, you I, know like, what, I hit it all the time. I've gotten so used to, I play a little low and I've gotten to wear like, so used to it. Well, yeah, because you know, for us, it's a good kill switch too. Because if you have this pickup turned down, roll it off. You can, yeah, yeah and then you can kind of swell it in a little bit, and then boom, back. You know, right. so I've just gotten to where I use it. I mean, I'm, it's it's like second nature. Which, that's a huge practical use I for you guys because you have a lot of swells. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, a lot of that stuff. So. And, Last yeah. thing, that's a real, real chunky uh, LP body. It is. Is, that he is it heavier than normal? It is, it is heavy because it's like old spec. It's not, yeah. you know, chambered or anything like that. This is a mid aughts custom shop, Les Paul Custom, that I had painted. So, of course, I messed it up. But, yeah. But, yeah, just for aesthetics. And I don't know, I might keep this this way for a while and go back to black at some point. Yeah. Um, who knows? Cool. Who knows? Yeah. Well, all right, what's next? All right, so up next, this is a... Again, I believe in 2012, Gold Top that my buddy Britton Nash, hi Britton Nash, at the amazing Nash Guitars, um, he just did this to it. Uh, I gotta it be was, honest, I see Relic guitars all the time. 
This guy killed it. Like it's the amazing. checking is, per it really looks it's totally authentic. It's yeah. unbelievable. He, um, I, it was already gold. He took that finish off. I was gonna say it's because it's muted almost. Yeah. It, it looks like. And he just did this, so it looks like a 57 or something, you know? Yeah. He just, I mean, he aged the hardware, he aged everything on it. And this one has a DiMarzio Super Distortion. Those are uh, fun, yeah. Yeah, upon the recommendation of my good buddy, uh, Brian Baker, they, from Friend of the Show. Yeah. Bad Religion, because he's... He kind of knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he does, he does. And he's sort of my, like, uh, gear guru guy, and he always gives me a bunch of shit about stuff I use. And he, you know, Brian Baker approves of this entire rig, so I'll, I'll go and preface it Hey, that's, that. a, that's a pretty good endorsement. So, yeah, yeah, we're good there. Yeah. So this is sort of the, the second. Um, and these guitars, I had this one made a few years ago, and then if you've watched the last rig rundown, we tried to um, do Evertune bridges, which we did for a while, and I wasn't about to Evertune can. These guitars that I have out here. So we ever tuned some Les Paul classics, which were great. And uh, so I've since retired those. Yeah. So what's yeah. wild to me is that the finish, like because I don't know if you've, you know, on a real vintage like a '58 or a '59, I guess they were using some sort of like copper to get that oh, gold top. Yeah, and so a lot of yeah. times when you see them fade, it has like a green tinge to it. Yeah. And it almost looks like that in certain lights. He he's, he murdered it. He's so gnarly. He might have done what you know whatever. Super. If his hands are on a guitar. They just play and sound better yeah. to me. He again, excuse me, shaved the neck, which I like to have done to all the guitars. I have really small hands, so I like to have the, at least the top coat shaved down a bit. I, I just feels, you know, I don't yeah. like the big chunky fat necks, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> so this is another standard. It's a 2013 that Britton Nash also uh, tricked out for me, and awesome. uh, again <clears throat> did an amazing job relicking. This was already a Cherry Sunburst Les Paul. Uh, and he was like, hey man, I do this to Gibson's if you want, because I had bought a few of his amazing guitars and I have a relationship with him, also through Brian Baker. And did this, this one has a Lawler in it. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I have three different pickups. But I kind of house like, loves you. Yeah, right? <laughs> I like having that sort, of, uh, that sort of variety. But you know, I mean, my tech, Mr. Jeff Bilson over here. There's not a ton of difference tonally because they're sure. all pretty high output pickups. So. Well, and you're playing with a, quite a bit of gain. So. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and playing with a bit of gain. So this would be the one I go to third. Yeah. Um, now, how often are you switching during a set? Like Barely at all. You yeah, because you guys I, are typically tuned standard. Exactly, yeah. and, and uh, this is also a 2012, and this is a regular black, black standard. And I brought this out to be like the drop D guitar and then we have a song, one song in Drop D that I don't even have to drop for it. So this is just kind of here now in case yeah. I need it. So um, what, um, what string gauges are you running? Same as last we're, time? I think we're, we're 11s, 11s. now. Yeah. I was 10 through 52s or 40, I was actually 10 through 46s with the Evertunes because it doesn't really that makes matter. Sense. Now I'm at 11s because you know we do E flat. Tuning stability. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, and this one has a, a JB in it actually. Ah. Um, actually, this might be have a set, uh, Derek Duncan, uh, at Seymour Duncan, hi Derek, uh, has been just so kind to me and he'll send me spec pickups that like, hey man, I was listening to your stuff and I think this would be great for you. So this might have a set in it that he had sent me, which is so generous of him and I, I love that guy. Yeah, right on. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. So that's what you're running all night? Those are my guitars okay. and I usually hardly ever, if I change it's because I just go to Jeff and go, eh, let's have some fun, you know. Just uh, to mix it up? Yeah. Just to mix it up. That's fair. That's fair. Well, that's wow. not a bad arsenal for right. not changing it. Exactly. Time. Exactly. All right. So here we are. This JMP. Yes. My favorite Marshall amp that I've ever heard. It's it's nuts, man. It came out so I, I, I took it to the studio the last time and our producer, Jason Livermore, he's uh, partners with Bill Stevenson, who's the drummer for The Descendants. Sure. And Bill is out here on this tour as well. And he heard it once and went nuts for it. And I don't know why I hadn't taken it to the studio before, but he, they do Kemper. They Kemper everything that goes in that studio. So he Kempered it, and he's like using it for all of his records yeah, now. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's just amazing. So what is it about the older ones that allows him to mod them? Is it because it's point to point and not a PC board or something like that? Is I believe that, that yeah. is exactly what it is. Gotcha. Yeah, I believe, you know, they're able to sort of get in there and move around a little bit easier gotcha. and not, you know, mess with, some, you know, and, and add things and, and, if, and add things. If I remember, the mod is actually a, a, a dial on the back. Yes. So you find your level of gain that you like and just kind of set it. Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. And like I said, there's five, five gain stages that you can then mess with, which is bananas. And I've never had a JMP, but are they a 12AX7 preamp? Uh, I believe so. That also, four 12AX7s? That's awesome. Yeah. Man. 
Great sounding amp. We'll have to listen to it in a second. Absolutely. But what do you and got for a backup? Is so this, it, this actually isn't a backup. This is my clean tone. It's ah. just a regular JCM 800. And Rise Against, <laughs> our clean tones are kind of ang ACDC. Yeah, I was going to say. So there's gain in it. Yeah. You know, it's not a lot of gain, but it's like you could get away with playing in an ACDC tribute with our clean tone. Right. So uh, I just was like, well, why not just bring the, the greatest ACDC tone out here? Uh, which probably would have been a plexi or an actual JMP that wasn't hot rodding. Right. Uh, but I had this amazing, I believe it might be an 87 uh, original, you know, red Tolex so JCM 800. Yeah. And I just had that retubed before I got out here with EL34s. I actually asked for 6L6s, but uh, the dude was like, oh, I thought you said, and it ended up sounding great. Sounded so fine. Like, All yeah. Right, yeah, let's go with that. So, yeah, so that would be my uh, my clean tone. So it's not actually a backup. I have some backups out here, and they're 900s, which kind of seems like a dirty word with some people. Some people don't like them. But to me, it sounds like an 800 with a tube screamer in front of it. Uh, it was sort of like the yeah. answer to the thrash metal guys. Yeah. You know? yeah. I found them a little hit or miss, the 900s. Sure. Some are the best sounding amps ever. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I've got two good ones out here. My backups are good. Yeah, that's and great. Tim, of course, uses the 900s as well. So. Yeah. And they're actually getting sort of hard to find. And, and you know, like the, the actual 90s ones, you know. Sure. So, and yeah. 50 watt is fun. Yeah. Because totally I feel is. like it does have that break up a little sooner than. Absolutely you know, does. Yeah. You don't have to crank it so loud. But. Uh, but yeah, so those are the amps. And uh, on the last one, we had the RJM, uh, the Mastermind. Switching everything. The switching system and stuff. And I relied on my amazing guitar tech, Jeff Bilson, who's sitting right over here a lot. And he would just, you know, he knew where the switches were. He's been around us so much. Well, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put pedals in front of me like a normal human being. Yeah. Punk rock so door. now uh, I have a very small pedal board, which we can get into. Oh, we do have the Shure UR4D uh, wire, uh, wireless system. It's Amazing, it's never given us any problems. We don't have any you don't notice any kind of uh, sucking tone or anything? Nothing. We've never had a problem with it, so we just stick with those. Awesome. And over here on the rack is, of course, uh, the radial JX44 sure. just for switching. Yeah. So, All yeah. right, let's take a look at the board. Yeah. All right, Zach, uh, before we dive into these pedals, I guess I didn't notice from how we came into the stage, you guys have no cabs. We have no cabs today because it's a smaller stage. Um, bigger stages, we've, we, we have just straight, I mean, like Marshall, B cab. 412s, uh, the 1960, uh, you know, straight straight front B cabs uh, with the stock Celestion G12s. Yeah. I had the idea this of it. We we had the older Marshalls that we'd have forever. They had been sealed by our tech Jeff. We had reconed them with Celestion greenbacks. They were tricked out, and because uh, good people at Marshall or you know they take care take of us. Care of you. Yeah. Good, good to them. I love all the time. I love the orange cabinets. I love Mesa cabinets. But we had done that. And so this tour, I was like, you know what? At one point, we retired the old ones, and we had bought new back lines, and we never reconed them. We just threw it, you know, got them, kept going. And I brought it up to Jeff, and I was like, well, should we, we should really cone those. And then I realized we're using these torpedo things, um, Captor torpedoes, which basically is like a Kemper for caps. For caps, sure. Yeah. yeah. So my, I brought it up to my sound guy, and I was like, well, man, maybe we should recone those cabinets. He goes, well, actually, man, you've got like, you're using a Mesa 412 with EVs and an orange with Celestial Greenbacks. So rad. You know, use it yeah, yeah, yeah. virtually out front. And so that's what's actually coming out. So today we don't even have cabs on stage, so our stage volume, that's just stage volume. That's just, uh, you know, monitors here on stage for our, you know, like since we're on ears as well, it's just sort of something you can kind of feel. So yeah, our cabinets are actually just stock Marshall. So those things have quite a few stock cabs. Yeah. Sims. Plus, you can add your own. Like, I think you Absolutely. can download and add a ton of them. What? How did you land on like the orange cab? Our, you know, our our sound guy is a sort of a genius. His name is Nate Northway. He's a genius when it comes to. He's also a guitar player when it comes to cabinet sounds, speaker sounds, mic placements, things like that. So he has a studio at home, and he already had this endless bank of things to be able to sort of pick and choose from. So he automatically, on the first day since we had the torpedoes, he just started going through what sounded best for my playing, what sounded best for Tim's playing, and what he came up with for me was a Mesa and an Orange, uh, and that's those speaker choices. And I would imagine even the mic placement, maybe it's a sure. five seven at like six inches or whatever. Uh, it's beyond me, and I, it's amazing technology. Man, and the future is so it. cool. It's the future <laughs> is now. It's insane. So I was like, well, I guess we don't need to recone those cabinets. Yeah. So yeah. Well, all right. So pedals. Yes. Pretty, pretty Spartan. Pretty Spartan. Yeah. I wanted to go as simple as possible because, again, Brian Baker doesn't use pedals. So right, like, at all. He can do it. And, and Stefan Edgerton from The Descendants on this tour, I believe he uses one. Uh, so I wanted, uh, my theory to start all this out was like, if Gary Moore didn't do it, if Michael Shanker didn't do it, those guys, 
I'm not gonna do it, you know, and that's ridiculous because we have so much more technology that we are able to utilize, but I still wanted to go as far as I could. So much to my guitar tech, Jeff's chagrin, I was like, we're tearing all this shit out. Uh, anyway, but he's a trooper and he did a, did a great job. So what we have, uh, we have the chromatic, the Boss chromatic tuner, the TU3 tuner, which classic. is the, the classic. Jeff made me a cool little switching system. Um, Basically, but it's just a you know an AB switch. Uh, he put a cool sticker on it. Is that between the 800 it's and the 900? Between the 800 okay. and the 900. Pretty gainy for your clean tone. All right, so yeah, All right. And, yeah, and so uh, we have the and we just have the radial JR5 sure. to go so I can see what goes you know, and we kind of threw that up and went you know at the time. So and then so. What I have first is the Crybaby Q Zone because I really, again, I have to keep talking about Michael Shanker. I love his lead tone, and of course, it's just a cocked Crybaby. And so I realized that's what this is. I, every time I used a Crybaby, I never really wanted it anyway. Just I would just get that turn it money on. for so nothing thing. Yeah. This is without, and then. Love you know, it. It's, it's great. It's loud. I mean, it's no. noisy. You know, it's yeah, noisy. it's noisy as shit. Now, does that pedal auto wah, or do you have it set to just I have cock it set wah? just to cock, okay. just to like. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, and then the Klon KTR. KTR is a great overdrive. It's so great. It's and so good. It's really expensive now too. They, they kind of keep going yeah. up, kind of like their predecessor. And I just love the. Uh, Kindly remember the ridiculous hype that offends so many is not in my making yeah. that he puts on. The dude is a trip, man. Yeah, I so just love it. If I'm correct, the KTR is basically, he took the Klon, but made it on a PC board so it would be affordable. Absolutely. When they first came out, they were like 300 bucks, and now you can't find them. You can't yeah, find them. Like, but I they have, sound so fucking good. Yeah. I have one of those Centuras that looks exactly like the Klon, and it's the same size, but it takes up like half your pedal board. So I got it to be a backup to this, and I called him, uh, Jeff, and I was just like, we can't, there's no way we can fit this thing on there. So as a backup to that, we do have the Archer, which oh, okay. is, yeah, and that thing is amazing. Yeah, the J-Rocket Audio yes, makes it, and yes. that's a pretty good it's approximation, great. I would in say. In case yeah. this one goes down, we got that. Uh, we have the Phase 90, which I don't have, I've never not used that. I mean, every, mm. every lead, I think. Yeah, you gotta use that. I mean, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, and then the Carbon Copy Delay uh, MXR, I think it's the best delay. They're and awesome. Luckily, we work with the MXR people too and the Dunlop, and you know, also their stuff just happens to be, in my opinion, the best stuff. We have the Eventide H9, which I had taken out, and that was in the last rig rundown. Uh, it says, oh shit, on it right now. <laughs> uh, and because we have one song, a song that's called there, Make It Stop, that. and it's, it's the. Uh, and it's just that super one arpeggiated. Song. Yeah. yeah. So it's on there for one song. One song. But it does a thing. It does a thing. I love that that thing has enough processing power to land a fucking it, ship man, on the moon, and you're using app, it app for an arpeggiated it's, yeah, delay. It's, it's, we're doing it for one thing. And I promise, if we drop that song off the set, that thing's going off there. Yeah. So I, I want to do it with as least amount. Because when I saw Brian Baker's, I was just like, that's the way to go. Man. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And I, you just you just smile, and it's as you know, and Stefan Edgerton as well. Both yeah. those guys, they do so much with so little. It's just like they really do, and that's the thing that kind of blew us away. Like I'm obviously a bad religion fanatic. We were so absolutely. happy to do that rundown, but it was like when we stayed for the show, it was like holy shit, you guys are getting so many sounds just. Oh yeah. Rolling down the volume. Just or the like, way yeah, the, the Billy Gibbons, you know, yeah, his lead totally. boost was just going up to 10 yeah. and his rhythm when he was just on eight, he lived there, you know, so weird. whatever it might've been. But then his amp, you know, I, I know guys that have worked with Billy Gibbons and now he's his, you know, his, his on 10, it's crazy distorted and like, you know, it sounds like metal or something. Oh, like, you know, and yeah. he just dials it back yeah. for that. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. So his lead is, you know, yeah. Oh, shit. Learn something new every day. I like that. Well, you Zach, dude, I know you guys probably got a sound check and get ready to do this thing. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for Taking having the time. Me. Got a new record out? Just uh, came out this year. Nowhere Generation, that's what we're out here doing right now, uh, working on that. So, yeah. 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 So come see him live. Yeah, catch the tour. Just kidding, it's not over. We ended up with a couple, <laughs> couple of extra seconds, and Jeff is going to uh, do us a favor and, and run us through the rest of the gear, man. So thank yeah. you so much for doing this. No worries. Uh, this is Tim's stuff. Uh, this is his main on this tour. Uh, it's a 82. Les Paul, or I mean, sorry, a SG. Um, was in a fire. I was gonna so say it looks this, like it's been to war. It's got this cool, uh, you know, maybe you can get some shots of that. Oh afterwards. yeah, it's all bubbled up and yeah. shit. Yeah, to the finish kind of. Crazy. But it made it out. It plays great, sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, that's his main. 
<laughs> I wonder if the fire, like, kind of like, you know how like a lot of companies now torify the wood, or like, you sure, know, right. I wonder if it had something to do with the resonance of the that particular piece of wood. Interesting. Very nice. Man, you think that neck would be a little tricky to play with all those bubbles and stuff? Yeah, on it. I don't know. Maybe he plays in braille. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> So that's number one, and he's on that pretty much most of the time. Yeah, so we got a couple of switches this tour. We're trying some stuff out. Typically in the past, he wouldn't do a lot of changes, but um, on this one, we're trying some stuff out. Um, they, in the past, they were doing some Evertunes. This time, they're not. So instead of you know tuning on stage, we're just doing some guitar swaps. Swapping them out, yeah. And the locking tuners, I'm sure, help quite a bit. Yeah, they're all right. I mean, they're old. I think they could be replaced after a while. You know, they get. They're just old tuners. They, sure. There's slack in there. The machines they, wear out and stuff. They just yeah. don't stay in tune very good. But um, yeah. Do you know what pickups are in? Are they stock? I don't know what the, is in these. I don't. I mean, these are guitars I haven't seen in so long, right. if even ever. So, this looks like it might have at some point had some sort of trapeze bridge on it or something. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it did. It's got some. A couple holes. Some holes in there. It's the real deal. Check in on this one. Right on. Cool. What so, else we yeah. got? All right, so his backup for this, inter interestingly enough, is this guitar. That's uh, his backup for the... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just kind of weird. It has to do with the tunings. Oh, um, okay. And the wireless packs and all that. Um, so, yeah, this is a ES, Les Paul ES. I'm not sure what year it is, 2015. Um, it's got the Evertune on it. This one he's been playing for a while. Stock pickups. Um, now, do you guys, you know, because it is a hollow body, do you have to put any kind of foam or anything that, to stop the feedback? No, well, I guess there's no cabs on stage today. But. No, there's no, there, we, yeah, we have, we kind of keep the stage volume under control. So that isn't really an issue. Um, so, yeah, so there's not a lot of stuff bouncing around on stage. But, yeah. Right on, cool. And then what uh, what strings and gauges is he running? He's 10 to 46 on these uh, uh, half step down guitars, um, but he's using the heavy bottoms on the drop. Drop D, yeah, yeah that he's makes got sense. the uh, 10 to 52s. All right, well, what, what guitar might he be on for drop D? So, drop D, his main will be this, this so he does it for the Nowhere Generation song. Yeah, <laughs> pretty obviously. Uh, which, which, right. Which song just comes out on? Huh? Yeah. So. Slick looking though. I love it. Oh, the mirrored inlays are sick. Yeah, it's cool. That's super cool. Stock, all, I'm all guessing. All stock yeah. stuff. I mean, I'm not really. He said he just. It was some guitar that they found, and he had it painted. It had a bunch of push pull stuff in it. Um, that I got rid of just because he's not using it. So you just go just, volume tone? That's yeah, it? Yeah, it's two volumes. Oh, okay. Just two volumes. Um, yeah, got rid of the tone knobs because they tend to just get in the way. Yeah. Here, so. put that sucker around because even the back plates are mirrored. Yeah, these <laughs> things are mirrored too. So cool. Oh, I love it. Cool. So, and then interestingly for that, the backup is this SG. Right. Which is another uh, Evertune. Another Evertune one. This one's newer. I think this is a 2012. No. Hmm. 2009. 2003. Um. So, yeah. Stock again. Pickups. Yeah, yeah or? everything's stock in this one as well. Great. And then uh, you guys also have a couple of acoustics out too, right? For we a certain do, song, we do. Life Away." I'm guessing. Yeah. Let me grab those. Yeah. This is his main. Beautiful. Martin, so satin finish sort of thing. Yeah, man. I'll, people will argue, and I'm sure anybody in the comments section will probably argue, but I will always stand by that satin guitars just sound better to me. I think they resonate better. There's not like that heavy lacquer, you know, really stopping yeah. the sound. Yeah. It's, it sounds good. It does sound good. Um, and that's debatable. I mean, obviously, you want like the thinnest finish possible. Sure. And then old school open gear tuners, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, Martins are always really sound great. His backup is... Fancy Martin. Yeah, a little fancier one with binding and all that. Some nice cool. woodwork in the back there. Great looking. D3550. Yeah. Cool. 
So that's probably it for guitars, right? That's it on guitars. Yeah, this time around. Go over and effects and stuff. Yeah, as far want. as amps and effects, I know he's running 900s. So we talked to Zach earlier, but have they had anything done to them or are they pretty standard? No, nope, no, nope, just 50 watt 900s. Um, nothing special on the cabs. He just has one, one head, one cab. Um, for a while, I was trying to do a separate head for his clean tone, but we just kind of make it work the way it yeah. is, you know. Yeah, those those 50 watts sound killer, man. Yeah. I, I love those. But yeah. yeah, and so effects wise, he's not running a ton of stuff. And you're actually with a RJM Mastermind doing the switching, right? I do the switching. It's kind of you know, it it isn't really like set per se. It's you know, like oh maybe this part coming up will sound cool with the delay, so I'll throw it on there. You yeah. Know? And if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. You know, just something to kind of like you know. Color the tone color a little bit. It, yeah. Color it up a little bit. Very subtle. I try to keep it subtle. Um, there's like nothing crazy in that rack. I know it's like a phase 90, a pog. Pog, yeah. There's a couple like single note little lines that he does that we I'll throw that on. Um, yeah, the H9, obviously that can do a bunch of stuff. I use that for some reverbs, you know. Yeah. The reverbs are great on there. Um, yeah. Uh, there's an EQ that I'll use sometimes when he's doing like a, a just, you know, he's maybe soloing or I just want his guitar to shift, you know, it's just kind of like a mid boost sort of cut some of the high and the low out and just focus it a little bit. Get that well. I think that's our cue to get on out of here. Yeah. Jeff, I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through Tim's gear. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for more rig rundowns, riff rundowns, video lessons, all that stuff. Later.